Welcome to another edition of The Statesman of Comedy. And uh, tonight I am joined by three of the hardest working men ever in the history of stand-up comedy. Will you please welcome Vince Sorrenti. <laughs> I've got a gig with the hardest working men in comedy. No one's got a gig tonight. But. In fact, that's not true, Vince. I know for a fact you knocked back a very highly paid I gig to be here tonight. <laughs> and I'd like to say how thankful I am for that. In fact, they offered the gig to me. So I've got to go. Would you mind hosting the show tonight? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bat up a topic straight away. Let's go with We Started Without You. Have you ever been late for something? I have almost completely missed a gig one time, Trev. You know, you do a lot of charity sometimes when you're emceeing, and they all look alike after a while. So I show up at this gig, and uh, it was a very rainy night in Sydney, and I got there early because I knew it was raining, people would be running late. And I get in, the room looks all good, I'm walking around and walk up to the sound desk and do it. I mean, I'm, I'm the MC, you know, Vince. Yeah, I, yeah, they don't give a shit. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Sit down. Sitting at the front table there and looking at the menu of what's on tonight, our lamb noisettes, you know, potato roasty, and your MC, Carrie Ann Kennelly. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, okay, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I was supposed to be at the AJC, I went to the ANA hotel. So I got, well, by the time I got the other gig, I was pissing down rain. It was almost completely over. So, yes, I have been very late. <laughs> now, Jack, uh, you are normally very methodical in all ways. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever been late somewhere? I was late for a dentist once. Um, when I do run late, I like to add a bit of humour to kind of sugarcoat the the pain of the people waiting for me. So um, on the way to this dentist, I basically rang up and said, look, I'm running late. If I'm not there in 10 minutes, get the dentist to start without me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it seemed to work. Yeah. It's not like you at all, Jack. Whereas no. Tim, you, you've been oh, late mate, for heaps of stuff. Mate, oh, I have been late for everything from the birth of children <laughs> to, um, oh, the worst one. Oh, my God, my auntie Faith's funeral. And my mum's gone like, no, nah, you just have to be there. You know, the whole family are going to be there. I'm going, yeah, mum, yeah, mum, no worries. Where is it? And she's gone, oh, at one of those, like, multiplex burial joints. And so I've, I've gone, oh, no worries. I've rocked up and I'm running late. I'm madly late and I've, like, bolted in and I've just, like, gone, all right, it's this chapel. It's a white chapel. I think that's what mum said. And I've, like, walked in and, like, everyone's, like, they're all in and I've just gone, oh, I'm late, I'm late. And I've, like, gone and stood in the back. And I'm going, oh, oh, the family must be all sitting at the front. Gee, I don't know anyone here. <laughs> this is not Arnie Face funeral. <laughs> and people are going, that's the guy from the telly. <laughs> he knew Dot. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like looking back at me, and I'm going, oh my God, I can't leave now. <laughs> And, like, people are doing eulogies and stuff and they're all sort of, like, looking at me at the back of the room and I'm just Did going... Did you come up in the eulogy, mate, about the time she met you? Mate, and... I ended up being one of the pole bearers. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's got a real thing with people who die. She loves filling you in on who's died. But oh, yeah. she wants to make it emotionally important for you. Like, you'd be sitting having dinner and she goes, Vince... <laughs> You remember Mr. Alessi? Mr. Alessi? No, no, Mr. Alessi. You remember Mr. Alessi had the fruit to shop in La Camba? I said, no, 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 Mr. Alessi. <laughs> you remember his son, Paolo, you went to school with him, you played football with him, Paolo, his father, and the little cousin, Mr. Alessi. Go, oh, yeah, Mr. Alessi, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, I've got I'll, I'll cross his name out of the bag for you. <laughs> well, sometimes she's obsessed with it. She, she's sitting there, she goes, guess who died? <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually reminds me, Tim, I, I had an experience um, at, uh, when m my father passed away. Mm. Uh, we went to the funeral and uh, at that stage, like, the speed cameras had just come in and there was like a lag time of about four weeks in between getting nabbed by a speed camera and getting the fine. So all of a sudden, like, yeah, one day I got a fine in the street just around the corner from my house and I've gone, uh-oh, how many of these are coming, right? Oh. So, like, it turns out I've got, like, one demerit point left on my licence. It went to my father's funeral and, like, you know, we loaded the coffin in the hearse after the service. I had no idea where we were going. We got up to some cemetery up in uh, em Emerald, up the top of the hills. And I get in the car with my sisters and, like, you know, I'm very conscious now to stay at the speed limit. And we're driving along and I say to my sister, 
Is it my imagination or, or is the hearse getting away? <laughs> <laughs> the hearse starts overtaking. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was the only dad's funeral I had that day, right? But, <laughs> but for them, they're going, oh, fucking hell, up to Emerald, never got to get back to Scoresby. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to go, can they do that? And going, well, what are the rules? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was, like, for about a month, I was just really worried that I was going to get a speeding ticket, lose my licence in a high-speed funeral procession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, gentlemen, let's uh, bat up uh, Comedy Masterclass. <laughs> We do pride ourselves that you know, we go well you know, most of the time, but oh. it, it doesn't always nah. work out that way. Nah. When have you had your, your horror gig? I went to the Perth Telethon. These telethons, they would go for days and they'd have comic after comic, audience after audience. You know, I'd come out and I'd did a spot and I was dying on my ass, mate. I was working harder than an ugly stripper. It was just going nowhere. <laughs> you know, the crowd just wasn't getting it. And I, I came off and I thought, oh man, what was wrong? And I looked at the crowd, they just picked them, they just picked them all up and moved them out again. I said, mate, what was it? He said, that was a deaf audience we had, one of our sponsors. Oh. And I said, what sort of a fucking idiot <laughs> would put a stand-up comic on in front of a deaf audience? Hello? <laughs> I'm flying! Hello? <laughs> well, Tim, you, you've done I've it. I've done a deaf audience too. Yeah. Snap, mate. Yeah. What a horror story. And I and I didn't twig because... Oh, I've yeah, how do you know? Well, you that's, know. But, mate, I've rocked up to the venue and all I've heard is like this, like, <laughs> noise, and it's the sound of cutlery on plates. So, is everyone all right? They're going, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh, no. It's a nightmare. But the, the food is a bugger, though. Food is a real thing that yeah, you, you can what, die with food. The you, yeah. there's, there's certain things when you, you can't go on while no. they're eating. No. You, you can't. And also, when you have to work over, like, 100 metres of dance floor. Even, mate, I, I, years ago I did a wedding, and as soon as I get introduced, out comes the food. And, I, and I'm yeah. going, hey, everyone's... <laughs> <laughs> My mum and dad in the front. Yeah, oh, that's our. Son. Yeah, yeah, he gives a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, mum, hey, it's me. You remember you came? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack, the standout uh, tough gig I've, that I had was the for the Victorian Sheep Breeders Association. You know, oh, yeah. back in 1987, and, and look, they just didn't get it, mate. Yeah, they, oh, I was talking, and they were kind of. Saying, well, where's the joke, you know? Just couldn't get it. Because yeah. they were like you, Jack. <laughs> they were too like me, yeah. <laughs> they were going nuts. They were trying, to, they were trying to out deadpan me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done pubs, I kid you not, out in the country, where what they've done is stuck a pool cue in the pocket of a pool table, strapped a microphone to it with electrical tape and pulled the pool light up and then made you stand on the pool table and, and go into the mine. And, and there's five blokes in the pub going, here, come on, mate, make us fucking laugh. <laughs> we might just take a very short break. We'll be back on The Statesman of Comedy very shortly. Statesman of Comedy, I'm Trevor Marmite, here with three of my very fine comedy buddies, and we're going to go for Exhume. <laughs> Firstly, uh, Vince, we've got a bit of uh, old footage of you in your US MTV days. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I hosted a, uh, a Tonight Show on US MTV in 1989, and it was basically MTV's first attempt at doing like a, a chatty sort of show, apart from doing videos. And the show had a different name every night. It was the big blank show, but it was the big man show or the big chair show or the big shirt show, whatever it was. How'd you get the gig? I went over to New York to play the clubs over there, and I got spotted by accident. Uh, by a producer at, at a play. I was, I was going to see the play. And he said, he said, hey, I think I saw a video of you, uh, you know, from Australia and so on. So, so, so we're doing this audition. Come on, you know. So I went to this audition and uh, I got the gig. But uh, it was a funny story because <clears throat> it's very competitive, as I was You talking. can bet. And uh, if you're any good, that's the, other, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the irony. If you're any good, they won't book you because they're so jealous of you stealing their audience. Yeah. And there was this one club downtown who would pay like $8 a show. You know, <laughs> and uh, if you went good, the guy wouldn't even give you a gig. And I, was, I can't remember this guy's name, but he was the owner of the club, and he, he liked to be the MC and run the joint. 
And I remember the first day on this Tonight Show, this, the big blank show, I walk in and he's there warming up the crowd. I said, oh, how you going, uh, Bill? Uh, he said, I said, what are you doing? He said, hey, there's this new show. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, do I'm warming up the show. He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm hosting the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're not warming the show up anymore, mate. Piss off. <laughs> So uh, this is a bit of uh, Vince Sorrenti hosting yeah. MTV. I'm Vince Manly Sorrenti, your contest host, and Hulk! <laughs> what a surprise! How big is <laughs> Tonight, Hulk, we're giving away a trip to California with Hulk Hogan. Well, that's not all right, buddy. No way, big dudes. We're also <laughs> giving away ten one-year memberships to Gold's Gym, brother, in Venice Beach, California. 100 t-shirts from a brand new movie, No Holds Barred. Oh, you know what, brother? We're also giving away 50 autograph posters, man, of my new movie, No Holds Barred. And we're also giving away... I mean, I'm not a midget. He is an enormous human being. He had a guy following him around wherever he went with a tray of food. Like in case he, he got hungry. He was yeah, never more than like an arm reach yeah. away from like a sandwich or a bird. I've got to get me yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jack, we've got some footage of you. You did an ad for Cher. That's right, yeah. I, I, I knew a, um, a guy called Wayne who worked for an advertising agency in Sydney and he had this great idea of uh, using the, the most unlikely presenter to do TV commercials for Cher's greatest hits. <laughs> and the commercials are rather different to any other commercials I've done. Let's yeah. have a look at it. There's not enough love and understanding. Shoot, shoot, yeah. I got mine. <laughs> In the gear, Jack. Yeah. In the gear. It got huge awareness. So oh, man. I found that strangely arousing. <laughs> Seeing you in that gear, mate. Settle down, mate. Settle down. Now, actually, I used to look like that years ago with the, the long hair and the... Uh, Fishnet stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of fun on the shoot, a lot of double entendres were floating around and the odd triple entendre as well. Uh, a triple entendre? Yeah, yeah, we, wow. we went berserk. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Tim, uh, you've brought in a, a little bit of footage that I am um, acutely aware of. Oh, yes, indeed, Trip. This, this is, is uh, Tim and I were working on a show years ago and uh, this, this sketch never actually made it to air. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't know why. why. <laughs> but uh, I had an accident when, uh, car accident uh, one day, I, I hit a tram. Uh, it wasn't my fault, tram shot out of a side street. Nothing I could do, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, it completely poleaxed my driver's side door. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, road rage was, you know, really sort of, you know, becoming quite yeah, fashionable. Infancy, yeah. It was in its infancy. <laughs> and uh, I had to drive the, uh, the car to the panel beaters the next day without the driver's side door on. Mm. I found that you don't really feel much like yelling out. You're more sedate, weren't when you? When you don't have the driver's side door on the car. Mm. So we came up with the theory that it was the driver's side door that was, that was really the, the problem. Mm. So uh, we actually, we were working on this show and for some reason they let us uh, send Tim out on the streets with a car door to see what would happen. Move it a bit though, really. We can move along a little bit faster. Move it, mate. That's the way. Nearly <laughs> there. Sorry, mate. Bad to the bone. Go on, metal boy, you go. Come, heavy metal boy, you go now. Go now. What's wrong with you? Go now. Oh, you gutless. What's wrong with you? Go now. Oh, go. Mate, don't touch me car. So, where have you been? You want to get in the back? You want to, you want to get in the back car and you, car and you know you can. Get in the back here. <laughs> Come on, girls. <laughs> get a load of this bloke. Yeah, what did you evolve from, mate? <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah, what else did you get for Christmas, buddy? Stick that horn up! <laughs> uh, I always said that I'd get you away. <laughs> Not planned, that last bit. They were most impressed. <laughs> All right, let's go for It's Hard to Look Cool When. 
And uh, I mean, while well, we're like, you know, cool folk at all times, sometimes it's hard to look cool. Vince? On stage, I've been decidedly uncool a couple of times. Once had to do this big audition for uh, CBS Records at the Metro in Sydney, big rock and roll gig, prior to the Uncanny X-Men, big band in those days. And I walked out on the stage and it collapsed, the stage collapsed. I went straight through it. And it wasn't like a three foot high stage, it was like uh, six, seven foot high. I felt, everyone pissed themselves laughing. They're all, How good is this guy? And then, I, climbing back up on the stage, it was one of those like those army exercises. You know, it's you know, really like you grab this and lift Climb up, up the netting. It took me half an hour to get back on that. I thought, oh, this is the funniest thing we've ever seen. In our life. It was just a stage I was going through. But <laughs> the other time, having done as many gigs as I have, you do meet a lot of weirdos. This was at the opening of Sanctuary Cove many years ago. I'm long, it was a beautiful afternoon. I was emceeing. There was a jazz band on. It was. Beautiful, sun was shining. I've told some joke and for some inexplicable reason, this guy in a full Scottish kilt has just leapt up onto the stage in one bound and grabbed me by the throat, you fucking bastard! And he's done, he's done to choke me and I'm going, I'm, I'm literally choking this guy. Everyone's going, ah! <laughs> it, was, it was a full on, it was life and death, and I'm going like, oh, who is this idiot? It's a dangerous game, we're It's in. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> happened just then. Yeah, just then. <laughs> it's hard to look cool when you think you're walking on a pedestrian crossing and you realise you've mounted a zebra. <laughs> I reckon it's hard to look cool if you're going swimming at the local pool and you think, I'll just wear my white footy shorts and no undies underneath them. <laughs> I found at a young age, it was, it's hard to look cool when your mum's knitted your school jumper. Oh, oh. oh mate, what if you've got the, the school jumper with the zip up the front with the ring pull on it? <laughs> you can't, like, argue off that that's Prince Planet. <laughs> Next we'll go for one of our favourites, those wacky cab drivers. They can ruin your day. They really can ruin... Oh, I had a guy pick me up the other day and, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like talking, sometimes, you know, you don't only hear well, yeah. yeah, but you have to exactly. talk to every person you well, meet. They you know? should go, where are you going? Uh, you know, going to Paddington. Conversation with or without, without. Thank yeah. you. Radio yeah. on. Yeah. Are you a front seat or a back seat? Back guy? seat, strictly back seat, mate. Back seat, but not, not to be snobbish. I just, no. don't, I've got one on the phone, or I'm reading, or something. Mm. I'm looking out the window. I'm, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I, but this guy, he obviously he wanted to talk, you know, and he was uh, intense too. And uh, I was trying to sort of just ignore him, giving one word answers, and but he was going on about like philosophy and then UFOs and aliens and like he, he really and he was egging me on like he really wanted me to participate in the conversation. And he was, he was being reasonably polite. He was going, oh, you know, the earth has been visited by people in the past. You know, that I said, I, suddenly I took an interest. I said, well, mate, you know, I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that. He went, that's bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> and he picked me up from my house, so he knew where I lived. <laughs> the next day, he's dropped off all these writings of his about alien life oh. and, like, uh, you know, people that he's encountered with. I moved home, by the way. <laughs> Oh, it's dangerous when they know where you live. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's not a cab thing, but when I was living in Paran, um, and the thing about being a comic is that you're home during the day, so you are prey to all these nutbags that want to come and knock on your door. And uh, I was on my way up the hallway with the form guide in the smoke one day, and there's a knock on the door. I think, oh, one of my buddies dropped in, I opened it up, and it's, you know, some sort of, you know, religious cult. And uh, I think it was, oh, well, I don't know. It was, oh, actually, uh, it was the Jehovah's, and who knows? The Jehovah's, they, they might be right. I don't know. Maybe they yeah. saw something. They, may, <laughs> maybe they did see something, OK? And, and we need to know. And, uh, and uh, 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 but the woman was standing there, and she said, would you like a copy of Watchtower? And I went, yeah, all right. Yeah. So I took it, and I said, thank you, and I shut the door. So then, like, every week at the appointed time, do, 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 open up, Watchtower. Thank you. Put it, and like, pretty soon the stack's starting to grow in the hallway. And like, you know, you know what we're like with mess. Like guys don't see it, but girls, like that's all they see, right? So my girlfriend starts saying, "Leah, what, what are you doing with these? You're never going to." I said, "Oh, look, there might be some material there. I'll read them one day." So, yeah, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll get rid of them eventually. I just leave them. They're leaving there. So, and pretty soon the stack is like about this high. And then one Thursday, there's a knock at the door, and I see two silhouettes through the glass. And there's the lady who'd been around every week with a really tall bloke, and uh, she went, uh, watch tower, and I went, yeah, okay. So I took it, and she went, oh, 
that'll be three dollars, thanks. And by the way, you owe us three hundred and eighty-seven dollars. <laughs> and I went, just a moment. Picked up the stack. <laughs> I went, there you go. Now fuck off. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I only catch cabs when I'm just absolutely too blind to drive. I remember one time I was going home and the cab driver was a bastard and I, I normally like fall asleep in the back and, um, and just like, I, 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 I sort of had drifted off and he kept driving round the block with a cat with a, with a ticket going. Uh, a ticket going. Yeah, 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 and I've like, noticed my house go past like a couple of times and then gone, hey, mate, oi, you've driven past my house. And, and the guy's gone, mate, don't I tell me how to do my job. I have been driving cabs for 30 years. And I've gone, I fucking know, mate. I've been in the back here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we have the Know Your Quiz, thanks to Crazy John. See you in a moment. And welcome back. Time for your, the Know Your Quiz, thanks to Crazy John's and Crazy John Flat Chat, the home of international calls from one cent per minute. <laughs> One That's cent wow. per minute. That's wow. insane, Trev. That is, that is completely off tap. And our quiz is Know Your Really Rich Dudes. Mm. So this is how it works, gentlemen. I'm going to put up a photo and you have to tell me either who the rich person is or who it relates to. All right, let's start off with this one. <laughs> yeah, I think I know that. You yeah. think you know that, Jack? I think it's J. Howard Marshall. J. Howard Marshall is absolutely correct with Anna Nicole, Anna Smith, Nicole Smith. Of oh. course, and the great irony is that he nearly outlived her. <laughs> <laughs> he actually met her at a strip club when he was 88. Is that a victory for uh, optimism? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Do you reckon she ever hollered for a Marshall, Trev? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, here's a photo. Oh, oh yeah. That's, yeah, I think... We both know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the DT is probably uh, the thing pretty much so. Yeah. He hates naming things after himself, doesn't no. he? Doesn't <laughs> he? The Trump <laughs> Tower and the Trump <laughs> Soap and the Trump Room and yeah. the Trump Hotel and the... Trumpet. <laughs> That's his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Oh, she's yeah. that, the author. Did you also write uh, Harry Potter books? That is correct. Is that Do you right? know her name? J.K. Rowling? That is correct. That is her at the launch of uh, Harry Potter and the Plunging Neckline. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame there's no more movies because, you know, we'd like to see him get older, like Harry Potter and the Broken Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Flaccid Wand. You know, <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> And the rectal examination. <laughs> I'm, I'm suing Harry Potter at the moment, or the, the franchise, because Ooh. they ripped me off uh, Harry Potter and the, the Goblet of Fire. Hey. <laughs> That's That's true. True. Who's this guy? I think. Is that Mark Zuckerberg? Facebook. Facebook guy, yeah. yeah. Facebook, oh, yeah. absolutely There's correct. There's a movie about him at the moment. It's called Social Network, a movie mm. about... Hey, I yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm going to give that a like. Yeah, you like... <laughs> two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can tell me who this relates to. Oh. Ooh. Oh. From oh, the audience. Yeah, from the audience. Yeah, in the audience. And, and they reckon Oprah. Yeah. Is it Oprah? Will you get a new car? <laughs> And there's one for everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> this is, in fact, the uh, school she opened for disadvantaged kids in Africa. I think more celebrities should have schools. It'd be good if you went to Snoop Dogg High, for instance, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, who's this guy? Is it the Sultan? That is absolutely correct, Tim Smith. Of that swing? is the Sultan of Brunei with, uh, I think, just two of his wives. He is far more than that, but just there is two mm. ceremonial wives, I it's believe. Right. <laughs> Apparently, when his daughter got married, uh, he spent five million on the wedding and it went for 14 days. Uh, just a small Italian wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> All right, and finally. Oh, it's a pretty yeah. easy one. How much is this guy getting an episode now? He's it's the half a man, isn't it? Yeah. That is the half a man, and he gets 375000 per episode. Oh, wow. Which is only a fraction of what Charlie Sheen gets, but he doesn't have to buy hookers and blow with it, so... Uh... Hey, it was a family outing in a hotel. <laughs> I think our winner tonight, I've got it down as Vince. Oh, I think nice. you've done it, Vince. 
Very well done. Vince, you are the winner of our New York Quiz. Thanks to Crazy John's Flat Chat, ladies and gentlemen. That is all we have time for. Will you please thank our very esteemed guest, Vince Sorrenti. <laughs> Jack Levi. And Tim Smith. That's all for the station recovery for this week. We'll see you next time. Good night.